So in this video, we're going to be talking about trimmer potentiometers and where you typically see them in guitar pedal projects. One of the main reasons we use them is for purposes of biasing a circuit. So in this video, we'll definitely be needing some memes involving bias. No. Stop it. Get some help. All right, no memes. Anyways, though found in a variety of projects, typically we see trim pots in one of three setups. Number one would be biasing BBD chips for modulation effects. Because passive components like resistors have tolerances, but certain chips require precise values for voltage or current, it is often that you will find trim pots on pedals that use bucket brigade devices, such as non-digital chorus pedals or vibrato or flangers and such. Number two would be biasing JFETs. When using a JFET as an amplifier, it is often that you will see a trim pot on the drain pin of the JFET. Typically, you'll set the trim pot till the voltage on the drain pin reaches 50% of the pedal's power supply. So if you have a 9 volt supply, the drain pin typically should be set to about 4.5 volts, or half, via the trim pot. And number three is biasing germanium transistors. Like using JFETs as an amplifier, it is often that you will find trim pots to get the bias set on these transistors. Both JFETs and germanium transistors have wide tolerances, which we need a trim pot to zero in on proper voltage of the circuit so that it'll work right. Germanium transistors are also temperature and humidity sensitive, which means the trim pot may need to be set up depending on environment. So let's look at an example of biasing a circuit with a trim pot via an oscilloscope, a voltmeter, and then finally by ear. So when building your own guitar pedal, eventually you're gonna run into a situation where you see one of these guys coming up, which is a trim pot or a trimmer potentiometer. And it's a regular potentiometer. It's kind of the idea of a set and go, set and leave it kind of a, well, variable resistor. Uh, so in this case, we have a Dallas Rangemaster-like circuit using an NPN germanium transistor, an OC40, and we have a trim pot, which is controlling the bias for this transistor. Now, if you look over here at the oscilloscope, you'll notice that we have our blue line, which is our input, and our yellow line, which is practically flat as our output. We're using a TH Customs uh, signal injector here to inject my signal into my range master. And then I have a voltmeter here, which I have my ground tied to ground, and then I have the positive lead for what I measure here. So in most circuits that involves a trim pot, there will usually be somewhere in the build dock where it indicates a voltage measurement that you need to take. So, using your voltmeter, set to DC volts, put your ground to ground, and then take your positive probe and measure what's needed. In the case of a Dallas Range Master, we're going to look at the collector pin of the main transistor. So, on here, we have a reading of practically 9 volts on the collector pin. Well, if we look at the Dallas Range Master's spec sheet, you're going to see that this pin right here should be reading somewhere around 7 volts flat. And because it's not, that's why we have this flat line. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this trimmer pot to adjust the collector, or sorry, the uh, resistance on the collector pin. And from that, swap hands here, we're going to watch the oscilloscope change as well as we correct the bias on the transistor. So as we turn this down, you can now see we're getting close to a little bit over unity gain. And as we get it further and further away from the 9 volts and closer to 7 volts, it starts to look more and more like an amplified sine wave. Oop, a little too far there. There we go. That's pretty close to 7 volts. And as you can see, that is much more of a boost than anything. Now there is a little bit of distortion up here on the top, and that's to be expected with the way the circuit's laid out. But as you can see, it's now actually producing an output much louder than its input. And that's how you bias these kind of circuits. Now the voltage values that you're collecting could be different from circuit to circuit. 
Maybe you're trying to get a collector pin of a transistor. Usually in the case of germanium, you'll be doing that because germanium transistors, the tolerances on those things are terrible uh, due to the fact that they're temperature dependent, humidity dependent, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you'll also see trimmer potentiometers used for JFETs uh, for similar reasons. JFETs have wide swing uh, tolerances, so you'll have to use trimmer potentiometers to adjust and fine tune the resistance values you need in the circuit to do what you're trying to do. But anyways, so you can just do this by simply measuring with a voltmeter or an oscilloscope, but let's just say you don't have either of those. Let's just say you're building the circuit there. Can you tell this by ear? Well, let's put it on the bench and find out. So here we have the same effect right here. And if we measure the collector voltage at this moment, you can see it's close to nine volts and we're getting almost no sound out of it. What you're hearing is the acoustic sound of my electric guitar there. Let me give you a clean signal. And nothing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the trim pot. And now all of a sudden I got sound. Let's see what the voltage looks like right there. 7.73. So you can kind of hear by ear. Now it sounds a little fuller. And what we got here for voltage? Closer to seven. So from that, you can now hear, even just by earballing it, if you will, what sounds we should be getting out of the pedal by earing out that trim pot. So as you can see, yes, you can even bias one of these circuits with a trim pot by ear. It may not be exact, but at least you're doing it to where it quote unquote sounds good, which at the end of the day, you should be doing a lot of this by your ear. Anyways, that's it for this video. I wanted to take a special mention to TH Custom Effects for their signal tracer pen, which was used in this video and which we now sell in our store. I'll put a link for that in the description below. If you like these kind of videos and wish to see more, press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you'd like to support us, please visit our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and check out our PCB projects, components, and tools, as that'll really help us out. Anyways. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.